We are tracking the tropics in a very active Atlantic hurricane basin. We have a number of storms that we're keeping a really close eye on. We're continuing to track Fiona, still a major category four storm as it pulls away from Bermuda and heads closer to the Canadian Maritimes. We also still have Gaston on the map, a tropical storm really posing no threat going to weaken over the weekend. But this is what we're really watching over the next several days. Tropical Depression 9. It officially formed earlier this morning as as did Tropical Depression 10, but 10 is expected to move off to the north, really posing no threat to anyone and a 30% chance of development for this tropical wave just a little bit farther off to the west. So we're going to talk much more about nine coming up in just a minute. But first, let's look at Fiona because this is set to wreak havoc on parts of the Canadian Maritimes as we head throughout the evening and overnight hours. Fiona still again major category four storm with sustained winds of 130 miles per hour pulling off to the north and east of Bermuda really quickly forward motion at 35 miles per hour for perspective as it was moving away from parts of Turks and Caicos earlier this week. It was moving around eight or nine miles per hour. So this storm is really booking it off to the north and east. It is expected to weaken just a bit before approaching parts of the Canadian Maritimes overnight and early tomorrow morning, but still approaching as a category three hurricane. This will likely be a record setting storm for the area with record low barometric pressure for parts of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Now, once it starts to interact with land, it is expected to weaken, but not before bringing significant storm surge, wind and some really heavy rain continuing to weaken as it pulls off to the north throughout the weekend and into early next week. So ahead of the impact, which again will start tonight, hurricane warnings are in effect for parts of the area as our tropical storm warning. So if you have loved ones in the area, if you have property or any interest, in this area of the northern Canadian Atlantic, just make sure you're checking in on anyone and anything because it is going to be a really high impact storm for the area. Tropical Depression 9 continuing to become a little bit better organized. Wind still relatively weak, 35 miles per hour, moving off to the west northwest at 14 miles per hour and expected to strengthen as we head throughout the weekend into a tropical storm by maybe even as late as tonight or as early as tomorrow morning. So pulling off to the north and west as we head throughout the weekend. Right now, the National Hurricane Center did put an official track out, bringing the storm into western parts of Cuba as a category one hurricane. But again, don't think too much about the category. Whenever the storm, uh, whenever Fiona rather hit Puerto Rico, it was still only a only a category one storm, but we saw the devastation it caused. And then as the storm continues to pull into the Gulf of Mexico, expected to strengthen prior to a Florida landfall sometime next week. The track is is still so far from certain. This is a forecast that you need to check back in frequently because it will evolve. It will change. The track is uncertain and the timing is uncertain as well. But right now, the National Hurricane Center does bring the storm into southwest Florida by the middle part of next week. This is Wednesday at 8 a.m. as a major category three hurricane. So even though the track will change, if you have loved ones in the area, if you have property in Florida, now is the time to prepare. It really could hit anywhere within this cone of uncertainty sometime next week. We do want to take a closer look at some of our computer models. We showed you this model yesterday. It shows the GFS or the American model. Those are the lines you see there in yellow and the European model. Those are the red lines and there is pretty strong consistency between both major computer models that the storm moves closer to parts of Cuba by the end of the weekend and early next week. This is right around Tuesday, but I think really more of a late Monday time frame. But you can see there's still several hundred miles of difference between the center of the storm and that will make a big difference in how the storm evolves, how strong it becomes as it moves off of Cuba and into parts of the Gulf of Mexico. The European model still favoring a more easterly track while the GFS model keeps it farther off to the west. And as these lines get denser and closer together, that indicates the storm is strengthening. So both computer models do bring a really powerful storm on shore to parts of Florida as we head through the middle part of next week. But notice by Wednesday, the GFS model still hasn't made landfall. The European model making landfall sometime on Tuesday, but both models do show landfall somewhere in southwest Florida 
sometime next week. But this is Thursday. The GFS still churning in the Gulf while the European model is working its way up the East Coast offshore from the Carolinas by Thursday. And then the uh, GFS eventually does make landfall late next week while the European model already has the storm up into parts of New England. So again, big differences in potential timing and track. You need to check back with us as this storm becomes a little bit more fine tuned. Now our spaghetti plots did show a little bit better agreement today. Yesterday, keep in mind each line indicates a different potential track of the storm. And yesterday the spread was from parts of Mexico all the way over to Miami. So the models are becoming a little bit more aligned with a landfall somewhere in western Cuba and then somewhere in Florida sometime next week. I know there's a lot of uncertainty in this forecast. It will change, but we'll continue to keep you posted as the forecast becomes a little bit more fine tuned. But right now, tropical depression nine is a big thing to watch.